a very good evening to all the viewers of this webinar on behalf of the bombay orthopedic society i welcome you all to wirock 2019 the conference will be held on december 20th to 22nd at the renaissance convention center and on behalf of the organizing and scientific committee i urge all of you to kindly register and attend this conference i also welcome you to the wirock ykspedia series this is the 12th case in the series which has been going on for the last 2 months today we have with us dr vishal kunnani he is a spine surgeon attached to the bombay hospital and the jj hospital and he is going to be speaking us speaking to us about lumbar prolapsed intervertebral disc how to get a great outcome every time you do the surgery welcome vishal thank you swapnil uh on behalf of team wirock i welcome you all to wirock 2019 and you all know the theme winning decisions getting it right the first time and keeping up to the theme here's my case for you uh i'm sure we all get to see cases of this kind where a young guy comes to you with low back pain which is chronic in nature and has been having this radiating pain that travels down the left leg which is for past 2 months and this patient is having difficulty in walking is in difficulty in sitting even sleeping and an examination would reveal some ehl weakness with a strong slr positive and more often than not these patients do carry their x rays and mris with them and that's the mri in front of you which obviously shows nothing much on a x ray however the mri shows that there is a degenerated l5 s1 disc with a disc bulge which is more on the left then on the right and the left sided foramen there is foramenal stenosis with a small disc herniation there and the moment we see this uh, it's it's a very common thing to actually start jumping on the conclusion of what next and being surgeons we often tend to start thinking about surgical options might as well be a right case for a surgery why because this patient has tried all his uh, avenues in last 6 months and for last 6 month has been suffering from back pain and symptoms so any wild guesses which surgical technique will really guarantee success to this patient with left leg pain and left foramenal stenosis is it the conventional time tested open surgical methods that will give like a 100% guarantee to this patient uh, or the more modern innovative micro endoscopic tubular surgery like the ones that i do or someone like a endoscopic intradiscal procedure can guarantee him like 100% success in this particular patient any wild guess to this well to the despise like some of our patients do this patient underwent a micro discectomy surgery unfortunately had no relief of symptoms at all what went wrong any wild guesses there we had a patient of left leg pain with left sided disc with left sided foramenal stenosis slr was positive and a newer technique of micro discectomy surgery was done for this patient but still no really symptoms what went wrong did the surgery fail would open surgery have really helped better like half the world would have started thinking that it is the micro surgery so less decompression would have been done or was it a technical mistake by the surgeon and he has battered the nerve or he has did a partial decompression and complete decompression was not accomplished resulting into no relief of symptoms what is to be done next is this patient like waiting for a new mri of lumbar sacral spine to see what is the amount of compression that is left behind was this failure foreseen could we have predicted that this patient is not going to get better and if at all yes can we for all our future patients ensure that it doesn't ever happens again at least i would want to have all my guards on that i'll never see any such failure in my life again so are there ways to really ensure that all my patients will have a successful surgical technique of whatever surgery i ensure in this patient a mri was done which shows that there is optimal decompression there is very very wide foramenal canal there as you can appreciate that all the ligamentum flavor is taken down yes there is some facet effusion but that can be due to surgical edema however the nerve roots both sides are quite free so then what went wrong why did this patient had no relief of symptoms at all the answer is the pain was not coming from the spine there was some non spinal condition which was mimicking the spinal pathology which was evident on mri and we got easily carried away by mri as this patient had 
pain coming from sacroiliac joints. And sacroiliac is of this nature, can really mimic and be a bigger spinal masquerader, mimicking very similar kind of pain. So the question is, how do we ensure success in this surgery? Like in this patient, the pain was coming from extra spinal cause. Why did we really miss this? Is this a norm? Believe me, even in the best hands, even the masters have missed such kind of situations where pain was coming not from spine, but looked like coming from spine because there was some MRI finding and the patient had some SLR positive, pain going down the leg all the way to the calf and the pain was actually either not in the spine or if it is the spine, it was from the facet joint or if it was from sacroiliac joint, sometimes the avian of the hip can also mimic similarly. So in these situations, does the technique of surgery fail when you offer them a surgery? Or it is the minimal invasiveness that could have guaranteed better success or a conventional surgery would have did better? The answer to both of them is no. Uh, the answer to this, that how do we ensure that all our patients can be guaranteed success when we choose them for surgery for a PIVD? The answer to this is patient selection. So if one thing that will ensure that all your patients get 100% surgery or surgical success, it is patient selection. How do we do that? Just follow two simple rules. Rule number one for good patient selection is the key to 100% success in PIVD surgery. Rule number one is rule out all extra spinal causes in every sciatic pain. Because there can be a coexisting spi extra spinal problem. Yes, like in our first patient, there was obvious compression in the nerve, but there was a coexistent sacroiliac problem happening there in bilateral sacroiliac joints, mimicking and creating the pain, which was probably the more common, more symptomatic version of the leg pain. And rule number two, excellent clinical radiological correlation. That means there has to be some obvious compression in the spine which can explain the symptoms. Let me bring out some case examples to you to explain these two rules. Rule number one is rule out extra spinal cause. Let me brief to you that there is a wide world of spinal sciatic pain masqueraders and leg pains with SLR positive is not present only in patients with PIVD. It can be actually be created by a big differential diagnosis like pain can come from hip osteoarthritis like in elder patients. In patients, similar leg pain with SLR positive can be present with AVN, greater trochanteric bursitis, estabular labral tears, even knee issues can prevent your patient from having a passive SLR. And so that's why the SLR may turn out to be positive. Sacroiliitis is not the only spinal masquerader which can present with leg pain and SLR positive. So please don't get carried away by MRI findings, neither by your only SLR. These are only some signs to ascertain whether spine pain is coming from spinal pathology or not. So how do we differentiate whether the leg pain of the patient and SLR positive of the patient is whether spinal in nature or non-spinal in nature? I think the only thing that helps is clinical acumen. Detailed history about the pattern of pain and detailed thorough examination of the patient's pain criteria which will ascertain you whether this pain and SLR positive is spinal or there is a non-spinal cause of this leg pain. For example, a pain which is non-dermatomal in distribution like in this particular patient is probably non-spinal in nature. Whereas a dermatomal typical SLR positive with bowstring signs adding up to it resulting into pain in the leg with SLR and bowstring positive is more likely to be radicular in nature. Whether the patient has paresthesia or not, whether the patient has motor deficit, myotomal and dermatomal in nature or not are specific questions that only clinical acumen can help you to catch up on. To bring out the summary of this, that radicular pains are ones which are specifically dermatomal in nature. We all know that a pain from L2, 3 or L4 region will be above the knee. Whereas from L4, 5 disc, compressing L5 nerve or S1 nerve will be below the nerve, below the knee area. And that is why a dermatomal pain with paresthesia, with motor weakness, with boasting signs positive is radicular in nature. All other pains which are non-dermatomal, diffuse, have no paresthesia, no motor weakness or have no SLR positive are the ones which are either inflammatory or probably non-spinal in nature. So to summarize this case one and rule number one, rule out extra spinal causes, asymptomatic findings on MRI are very common. Please don't get carried away by them. For every leg pain, sciatica looking patient, please look out in all the differential causes of it because extra spinal causes of leg pain are far more common than what we think. Coming to my rule number two, if you really want to ascertain that this patient whose extra spinal causes have been ruled out, whether this patient will really benefit from surgery or not, come to rule number two, which is established structural cause of symptoms. 
is there a specific radiological finding which can explain the symptoms or not is there a good excellent clinical radiological correlation or not this is one thing that will determine whichever kind of surgery you do whether you do open surgery you do a laminectomy interlaminar micro disc micro endoscopic endoscopic or whichever technique of surgery you are certain if you have ruled out that this patient is extra spinal cause and has got no extra spinal cause only and an only spinal cause with the excellent clinical radiological correlation your technique of surgery is going to help let me just bring out some case examples to you like in this patient who has a l5 s1 pivd with right sided leg pain and all the extra spinal causes have been ruled out which kind of surgery do you think is going to help him the answer to this is none why because surgery will not help this patient's right leg pain as the disc is on the left side there is no right sided compressive element noted and that that's that's why this any any surgery to remove that disc fragment we will not help him because there is no correlation of symptoms to the radiology in another case scenario a l12 or a high level disc with calf pain we all know that calf pains are created by l45 or 5s1 disc whereas here the disc is lying at l12 level it is possible that this disc is chronic calcified asymptomatic disc and that's why none of the surgeries that we mentioned discussed earlier is going to really help this patient whereas in this patient with left anterior thigh pain and left l45 pivd is any surgery going to help the answer again is no we all know that anterior thigh pain cannot come from a l45 or a 5s1 particularly in this case where you see l45 disc with a 5 sacralized you know that this this disc is not the cause of anterior thigh pain and no amount of surgical decompression is really going to help this particular patient and that's why surgery will help only in patients where there is excellent core symptoms to radiology after all extra spinal causes have been ruled out how do we establish this very simple pain below the knee and calf comes from l4 5 and 5s1 and that's why whenever your patient comes to you with a specific calf pain ask and put leading questions whether this pain is in the calf only or it is in anterior thigh posterior thigh it is in the buttock it is in the sacral area or it is only in the calf area or it is a generalized diffuse pain and you get to know whether your l4 5 l5 s1 disc seen is the cause of the pain or not similarly a pain above the knee in the anterior thigh area meralgia parasitica can be a cause femoral nerve irritation can be a cause or there if there is a disc at l2 3 3 4 because that's the area which supplies the anterior thigh can be the cause of it again coming back to the basics of examination the pain pattern has to be dermatomal in nature has to be associated with radicular signs only then you know that this is a spinal cause of pain with a explainable structural cause to the symptoms and that's why the message number 2 is excellent correlation of symptoms to radiology is very very important and if you do not have a structural cause of pain no surgical intervention will help it to summarize success in surgical interventions in disc are not determined by any surgical technique every surgical technique will give you excellent result provided you just follow this one simple rule of meticulous patient selection which depends on ruling out extra spinal cause in every patient of leg pain and establishing excellent clinical radiological correlation in every single patient who's been offered surgery i thank you all for patient listening i hope you enjoyed this session uh, proceedings back to you swapnil thank you very much vishal that was indeed very crisp and the message was very very clear cut and for more such cases more such interesting discussions uh and also a fantastic scientific and an extra curricular program i invite the viewers of this webinar to wirock 2019 all of us are waiting to welcome you it's going to be an academic extravaganza and it's also going to be a fantastic fellowship for all of us to meet up and exchange our thoughts and our processes thank you very much vishal and on behalf of the society i thank all the viewers for watching this webinar thank you Thank you.